Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to give you guys a quick rundown of the Kaden Live Free Video Editor, which you can pick up for Windows, Mac, and Linux. So jumping right into it, we have the project bin on the top left. When you want to bring in materials to use for your videos, this is where you're going to be dragging and dropping them, whether that is a video, an audio file, or an image that you want to use inside of your timeline and export it to your final project. So if I want to go locate some materials, you can do it any way you want to on your computer. The easiest way is going to just be to use your standard file explorer. Find the file that you're going to want to bring in. So I'll go here to a gameplay folder and I'll go ahead and bring in a video clip as a mp4 file. MKV also works which is nice because those are probably the two video formats I use the most. Now if I was to double click on this and hit play in the preview window we'd be able to see the clip. But what you might notice if you have multiple audio checks recorded is that only one of them are going to play. So one thing that you can do is to select your video track and then to go over to the clip properties window right over here. You may need to switch over from effects composition to clip properties. And instead of being on the file info tab, come down here to properties and then you can select the audio stream. So in this case, I can select audio track two instead of audio track one. So usually when I'm recording, I would have audio track one be voiceovers, but in this case, we'd want the actual background audio and that would be audio track two. So if you want to actually use both of those at the same time, what you can do is you can right click on your clip, you can duplicate it, and then on your duplicate track, you can select the audio stream that you actually want to use. And then you just bring both of those onto the timeline. So uh, I guess we could just demonstrate that. So here I'll bring the clip that has the audio stream one, so I'll put that onto the timeline. You can see that when I left click and drag it down here, it's going to be putting it into the timeline wherever I want it to go. Note the timestamps up here at the top for the timeline. So if I want this to be at the very start, then I should go to the bottom right here for the zoom level, go to the first frame of our timeline, which is the start of our video project and drag it in. So I'm gonna be putting it here on video track one and audio track one. And uh, what I can do to make sure that we don't add an extra unnecessary video track is to actually lock the video tracks here. So if I lock video track one and two, and I bring down the second clip, which has audio stream two, then it's only gonna be putting in the audio track. So if I put that down there, and let's zoom in a little bit, make sure that everything lines up, but you'll have to unlock the video track one to do that. Then by doing that, we now have both of our audio tracks inside of our project. Now, when you bring in video and audio from the same source together, they're gonna to be linked together. So if you left click on one of your clips, anything linked together is gonna to show in red. So you can see that the video one and the audio one are linked together, but the audio two, because that was technically from a second source clip, is not grouped together. So if I wanna combine all of those so that they're edited together properly, then I can either left click and then shift and left click on any additional clips I wanna to group together. So to link those together properly, I need to left click on my first clip and then while holding shift down, left click on the second clip I want to link together. Now I can right click and go to group clips up here at the top. You can also see control G works as a uh, hotkey. So if I left click on this get wrecked by tsunami clip now, all of the tracks are linked together. So if I move them around in the timeline, they move as one clip. Okay, let's zoom in a little bit more and let's talk about the timeline tools now. So obviously you have the selection mode, selection tools S, and then next you have the razor tool. So you can select this with a left click or you can hit X on your keyboard and this will allow you to split a clip into two. So wherever your timeline cursor is, this red line is where your cut is going to be made. So if you left click, one clip becomes two clips. Now when you separate clips, they become their own separate groups and you can cut them away or edit them individually from one another. So if I left click here again, I've now taken my one clip and separated it into three clips. So one thing that you might want to do is to cut away part of your source material where it's not very interesting or there's nothing going on. So you can do that by using the selection tool and then clicking on the clip you want to modify and then you can hit the delete key on your keyboard which is gonna leave a big black space. If you want to remove the clip, but have clips to the right slide over to the left, basically doing a ripple delete, what you can do is right click on the clip you want to get rid of and then choose extract clip. So you'll see that the clip that's to the right 
pushes over to the left to fill in the black space. Alternatively, if you use the delete key, what you can do is you can right click on the black space and you can just choose remove space. So either way you get the same result. Another common thing you want to do with the video timeline is to trim your clips. So what you can do is go to the selection tool and if you hover over the edge of one of your clips, either the start or the end of your video clip on the timeline, you can left click on it and drag it to the left to shorten the clip or drag it to the right to expand the clip. Uh, that only works of course if there is additional source material. So if you brought in your entire video clip to the timeline and you tried to expand its duration, it wouldn't work because there's no extra source material for it to pull from. So just keep that in mind. And you can also left click on your clips and drag them around on the timeline. So wherever you get that hand tool, that's what that's going to do. Another thing that you can do with the selection tool is to pull a video clip or audio clip onto higher or lower level tracks. So if I left click here and I drag it up above, generally you'd be able to pull it onto a higher track. What's happening here though is because there's two audio tracks, I'd need to actually add in an additional audio track for this to work. So in order to add an additional audio track, I'm going to right click on the title of audio track 2 here and choose insert track. So we're going to be inserting a track under audio track 2 and making sure that audio track is checked here and then hit OK. So now that we have three audio tracks, we should be able to pull this video and audio track up one level. So you can see because they're linked together, they jump up one track or down one track at the same time. And you have to have a spare video track and audio track if you want to move them up one level. So the spacer tool is actually pretty similar to the selection tool. It allows you to move clips around. And one difference I have noticed about the spacer tool is that if you go to a clip that is on the left of stuff that's to the right on the video timeline and you left click it, it's actually going to push all of the video information at once. So by doing this, you can change the position of your video clip, but everything to the right is going to move the same duration in sequence. So if you want to move everything at once, rather than having to select your tracks individually, then the spacer tool might help you out a little bit there. Of course, one very handy thing is that snapping is enabled by default. So if I want to pull these two clips together, I could do that using the selection tool or the spacer tool. So I'm going to left click and pull this over here to the left and you can see that they snap together perfectly. Really handy to have that when you want to set up transitions. So just when you want to make sure you don't accidentally end up it with black space. So let's push these two clips to the left using the spacer tool. And by using that, we get it done at once. So if you want to edit your title, double click on the template title clip, uh, not the title part, but anywhere else. So if you hit OK, you'll see the text appear in the center here. So we're going to want to double click on this and we can change some settings about it. For instance, the text, we want to change that. So I'm going to select all the text, delete it, and I'm going to type Chris apostrophe tutorials. So Chris's tutorials. And then we also have the ability to customize the position. So a simple way you can do that is to align center up here. So center horizontally and vertically center as well. Now when we do that, you may notice it changes the values over here. So this is the precise pixel positioning of your horizontal positioning and your vertical positioning. So if you need to adjust it off the center, then you can change those values. If you want to add an image to your text, you can do that up here. You can also add rectangle boxes if you need like a black background for your text to stand on top of. And you can also add additional text elements. So you can select the font name here and then left click on the drop down menu, find any font you have installed on your computer and apply it there. If you want to get rid of the outline, you can just kind of take the outline pixel value and set it to one or zero. You could also change the outline color so that it just blurs with the outline. And you can do a drop shadow if you want by clicking on there and giving it a blur value and an offset. So the offset is going to move the shadow in a direction away from where the source text is. And when you set a blur value, it's going to make it so that the shadow isn't completely sharp. So if I set the blur to zero, you'll see that the shadow is 100% uh, sharp. So I could do offset five and then offset five for the Y as well. And then we have the shadow with no blur. It looks like the original text. With blur, it is a little bit hard to tell what's going on there. So that's the idea. Okay, so let's say that we wanted to keep this title template. Uh, we can go up here to the save. So we can save this as a new title template, which is currently storing in a default directory for Kaden Life. So I'll just call this Chris Tutorials title and hit save. 
So at the bottom, which my Windows taskbar was hiding a bit, there are some additional tools. So zoom over here. If you want to select everything and deselect everything, if you want to show a background, but most notably the OK button. So make sure that when you're done, you hit OK so that it can actually apply to uh, your video. And in this case, because we already saved it as a separate file, I'm not going to save it to a title file to reuse. I'm just going to save it in the project only. So you can see how the text appears there on the screen. Uh, may need to go back in and reposition it. So in the case of this text, let's actually double click that real fast. And I'm going to select this and I'm going to align it vertically in the center and make sure that it is vertically aligned in terms of its positioning on the screen with these buttons as well. So we can hit OK and now it's centered again. We can drag the title clip onto the project as video track two. And now when we hover over the part where it has video track two, we can see our title appearing in the screen. I can also hit space on the keyboard to play it back with the base underlying video clip and the title on top. So if you wanna edit the title more, just double click it and then you can select the text, increase the size, whatever you need, recenter it, hit okay. Okay, and that basically in a nutshell is how you can add a very simple title to Caden Life. So now let's talk about some of the built-in effects in Caden Life. So if I move these panels over here a little bit, you'll have a compositions and effects panel over here. So there's a few tabs. If you want to do all the video effects, you can click here. Audio effects are over here. And then over on the right, you have favorites, which I guess there's a few added on here by default. So you can navigate these menus and try to find some effects that you might want. So under the color tool, you can see a lot of options here, for instance. So the sepia is kind of going to turn everything brown if we apply it to a video clip. So if you want to apply an effect like sepia, you can drag it on to your clips down here. And you can see it'll show sepia right under the file name, indicating that it is added on. If you left click on the clip, and you go to the effect composition stack, you can see the effects which are here, including the ability to delete them and to change the values of those effects. So if you want your sepia effect to look a little different, change the hue color, then uh, you can do that here and that will come in handy. So uh, let's go ahead and hit play now and you can see how it looks with that sepia added on. Note that because it's a separate video clip, if we hit play there and it transitions to this next clip, even though it's from the same source material, it no longer has the same effects on it. So that would be another reason you would separate your clips. Okay, so let's find one more effect image adjustment. We can come down here to mirror. I'll drag this onto this clip. And what you'll see is that with this effect, we're able to mirror one part of the screen across to the other side of the screen. So there is a lot of pretty handy effects that you can use on your videos in Caden Live. So let's show how to do a simple wipe transition between two video clips. So if I right click on a clip, I can go to insert a composition at the bottom and choose wipe. So you'll see this wipe hovering below the video track one. And if I play it back, it'll have a simple fade from black to the full opacity of the current clip. So the first two things we're gonna wanna do with this clip is to set the duration of how long we want it to basically come into this clip. So I'm gonna right click, go to edit duration. And let's change this more like to one second down from three and then hit OK. I'll also zoom in on the timeline so we can see a bit more about what we're doing. And next we're gonna duplicate this clip. So I'm gonna right click, go to copy. I'm gonna deselect the clip. I'm gonna hit Control V to paste it in. And now I'm gonna move it and snap it to the left side of this cut border. And then to make the wipe on the left a fade out rather than a fade in, we're gonna go over here, left click on it and choose revert, which is gonna reverse the direction. So if I play the whole thing back now, we get a fade out and then it fades into the next clip. What we can also do is change the wipe method on each of them. So if you want a different kind of transition, um, like let's use this checkerboard and I'll apply the checkerboard to both sides then we get a different kind of transition. So I'll play it back one more time. And we got a checkerboard out and a checkerboard in, and that's much cooler than just a standard dissolve. So let's wrap up this quick video on Caden Live with how to render your project. So assuming you've made all your edits, everything's good, you position your title template where it actually belongs, and you've edited in your transitions where you need them to be, then we can go to the render button. It's the big red one up here at the top. So if we do render here, we're gonna need to set a format and a location. So MP4 is obviously gonna be really good if you want to export to the web. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that here. 
we need to choose an output file location. So for now, the default, I guess we can use that. If you want to browse, you can click on this little folder button. And we're going to want to hit this render to file button. So when we do that, it's going to add it to the job queue down here. And it's just going to start outputting everything on the timeline to a new video file. So if all goes well, we'll be able to open that up and uh, see how it looks. Okay, so render finished. So I'll go ahead and hit close and I'll locate it in the videos folder for my user profile. I'll double click on the video and we'll open it up. So if I turn on my audio to test it and hit play, I should be able to hear everything playing back. We have the little title. And then when we get about 13 seconds in, we have this checkerboard transition. So that in a nutshell is most of the basics for what you can do in Caden Live, including setting up the timeline, making basic edits, adding effects to your video clips, creating simple titles, adding transitions, and rendering your project. So that's going to be it for me for this video. I've been Chris. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in my future video content.